Hey guys, this is Herre from Tuir, live on YouTube, here to uh, answer your questions and talk about whatever you want to. I'm a bit late, had some issues uh, getting online. I was trying to, to uh, get online with my uh, through my iPhone, but that didn't work so well. So I'm now online on my laptop. I hope you can hear me. Can you uh, let me know if you can hear me, please, if anyone's watching in the, in the comments? Turn off my Wi-Fi here on my iPhone. <clears throat> Heike says hi. Hello, Heike. Good, good. So we're online. Um, I think I did not actually pick up the uh, premiere that, that I had set, but this is actually a, a new thread. So uh, I hope you can hear me and see me. And... Um, I apologize for the delay again. <clears throat> this is the first time I'm uh, live on YouTube, I think at least. And uh, I, I was trying to go live on, on a third party app co called uh, Streamlabs on, on my iPhone. Because uh, I'd rather do this on my iPhone because I have, have a nice microphone I can connect to the iPhone and uh, I can move the iPhone around much easier than my laptop. So, um, but, but it just didn't work. I couldn't, couldn't figure it out. I should have maybe run a test first. Anyway, the first thing I wanted to do here is is answer questions from people who support me on the Patreon. And uh, let's just get right to it. There's a guy called Tim Reagan or Regan uh, who asks me regarding the songs that have been released lately with the Faroe Island Symphony Orchestra. Is a physical or downloadable release planned for that concert? If so, I will buy it in a heartbeat. Thank you, Tim. We're just at the moment uh, talking to and uh, negotiating with uh, Metal Blade Records about releasing it uh, in uh, several different formats, hopefully. Um, I don't think I'm going to get into any details, but what people have been asking for, at least, is uh, CD, uh, streaming, and DVD. And we're looking into all of those, maybe more. and. That's where it's at at the moment. They are, are definitely willing to release it on CD and, and streaming, and uh, we are looking into the DVD as well right now. How long it'll take is anyone's guess, especially these days. Uh, but um, it'll happen. I, I would just guess it'll, it'll happen in, in um, the next half year at least. I, uh, th these things tend to drag out. Uh, so uh, that's just my guess at the moment. But it will be released, definitely. Uh, Tim asks another question. You have discussed your songwriting process in past videos in which you demonstrated how you start with the melody, then build around it. Have you written songs starting with the rhythm guitar line before? If so, do you have any insights into making memorable melodies from an existing chord progression? Uh, yeah, I do, I do. Um, the songs that uh, Terry and uh, Gunnar have made were mostly based on riffs, so they didn't really make melodies for the songs. Uh, in, in best case, simple ones that I then uh, adapted to, to my preferred style of singing. And um, maybe the best example of that is the song Blood of Heroes. Um, it, it was um, There was no melody to it. it was, uh, Terry showed me a, a very long and intricate song that he'd made. And this, the riff that we finally used for, for the song Blood of Heroes was just a tiny part of that, like, like a C section somewhere in the middle. And I, I uh, used that for the entire song. Now, there's, there's a very simple melody line in the riff itself, and uh, I used that to, to build the melody from. So if the riff comes with a melody of sorts, you can just use that and expand on it on, until you have a melody. It's just uh, dun, 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 if you remember, then you make the obviously the most obvious, obvious move is the third harmony above that, and then other harmonizations as the chord uh, progression progresses. Um, if you only have a few chords put together, I think it's very easy to make a melody, but I would under all cir any circumstances, uh, when you come up with a melody, that you're just um, where you're just trying something out to a chord progression you have. If you think it would be better to change 
or if, if the melody doesn't fit that you want, it's always better to change the chord progression and go for, for the uh, good melody. Um, so that's what I have to say about that. Antoine Miktarian asks, Hi Heron, when do you hope to go on the road with Tuij? Tomorrow, I hope, but that's not going to happen. Um, that's a good question. The the um, tour in uh, in the fall in through Europe, mostly northern Europe, ha is still on as uh, scheduled. But we just have to see when we get that far if we uh, will be able to go on tour with all the restrictions. Um, I called the, uh, for example, I called the Danish border police uh, a few days ago and asked them if if um, entertainment was seen as as a valid reason business reason to cross the border and they said no uh touring musicians would be turned back at the border and that's valid as at the moment until the 10th of may and at that point they will reconsider the situation and see if they will um, continue uh, or extend the, the measures um I, I didn't keep up with uh, the situation in specific countries uh, check the check border is open for business again i think I didn't check for musicians specifically, but as I understand it, there's no uh, real restrictions crossing the Czech border at the moment. Um, so we hope, uh, well, let me add to that, that uh, we, we had some festivals in the Faroes also, and they are uh, uncertain at the moment. It's uncertain if they will happen. Uh, if I go to the Faroes, I will have to spend two weeks in quarantine, as will anyone else who goes to the Faroes at the moment. That's, of, of course, very unfortunate and inconvenient for, for uh, touring. Um, so, as it looks at the moment, uh, October is, is uh, the, the first possibility. Um, I heard from uh, Tadeusz the other day that the Hungarian authorities... Uh, banned, uh, prolonged the ban up to 500 people gathering until the mid of August. And that means, of course, uh, Rock Marathon probably won't happen. But 500 people still, um, we, we don't sell that many tickets, not usually. So um, there is a chance we might go touring if we're allowed to cross borders and have up to 500 people. So the details I have at the moment are for the Faroes, Denmark and, and Hungary. I, I didn't really look into the situation in Germany or, or, or uh, Finland or anywhere else. So, yeah, it's it's uncertain when. But as I said, we hope to be on the road in, in, um, in the fall. And that was Antoine. Let me go to the next question. Next question comes from a guy called Pajama, and his last name is God. Pajama God. I wonder what his mother was thinking. Hi here, I hope you've been doing well. I was curious as to what made you decide to pursue music professionally. I think I recall you stating before that you also studied language at university outside the Faroes. Also, do you still find time to listen to new bands and records being released? Well, yes, I first um, started studying um, linguistics at the University of Copenhagen. I wanted to be a linguist, but at the same time, uh, or maybe only a few uh, months or, or maybe a year before that, I uh, founded the band Tuir together with, with uh, Kari and Gunnar, and it took up more and more of my time. I knew I wanted to be a musician along with anyone else, anything else I might turn into, and um, it, uh, I studied at the university for two years, I think, two, uh, four semesters. And I, I uh, simply didn't spend enough time on my homework or, or the assignments. Uh, so um, I, I didn't, I, I didn't pass some very important tests and I decided one day walking home from university that this is not gonna work. If I'm gonna be anything, I'm gonna be a professional musician. And I think I must have been about uh, must have been somewhere in my mid twenties when I when I made that decision. It was a um, financially very poor decision, but um, creatively very um, rewarding decision. 
Um, and the second part of that question, do you still find time to listen to new bands and records being released? No, I do not. I've never been one to look up whatever is, is new and uh, what's the latest in metal. Never. Uh, the, the All the metal I've come across, I've come, I've uh, heard from people who are close to me. My First, my big brother started listening to uh, Black Sabbath, Judas Priest, Uriah Heep, stuff like that, and I got into that. Later, when we started making our own music and, and touring, um, I have got into some of the bands that we were touring with and some of the bands that everyone was listening to in the um, in, in the in the metal community. And uh, these days, it's mostly what my girlfriend listens to, actually. Uh, I would never go looking for new bands myself. I would just listen to the same old, same old a thousand times over if it were up to me. So I don't... I, I've never been one to make time to, to listen to new bands and records being released. Um, but through through uh, friends and, and uh, personal relationships, I do come across uh, a new band still. Uh, Scott asks, when did you begin using a seven-string guitar? That must have been around 1996 or 1997. I'm, I, I had a an Ibanez guitar for quite a few years that I played with in, in uh, the band we had before Tour. And um, it was a six string with 24 frets, very standard for Ibanez. And every now and then I, I had some, some uh, riff or, or song made or some melody that would have been convenient if it could step outside of, of the um, um, limitations of the guitar. And th there was one option and that was to, uh, uh, tune, make a drop D tuning or, or uh, tune up, for example, on, on the uh, E string, which I did once in, in studio for the for the first album on the song Sand in the Wind. I I needed to, to get one higher than 24th fret on, on the high E string and I simply tuned it uh, half a step up to, to play a specific line. Now, of course, you can't do that live. Uh, if ever I were going to do that live, I would need a guitar with more frets th than uh, 24. And on the other end, I would I would like um, a guitar with with uh, with a lower string so that I, I could reach and um, tuning uh, detuning was just out of the question. So as soon as I heard about the Ibanez seven string guitar, I uh, decided immediately I was going to buy one. I went to uh, a music school in in Copenhagen in 1997. That was just one year of of um, this is what they call uh, high school in. Denmark. It's not really. I don't know the uh, the English word for that. Um, anyway, when I was there, I sold my uh, my Ibanez six string and bought uh, the wonderful black seven string that uh, I recorded the first uh, two or three albums with. And that's the end of that. Uh, Tim again asks a question. How did you create such a beautiful, clean guitar tone on The Lay of Our Love? Which guitar was used? What amp effects? Etc. Well, uh, we recorded that all in studio under the uh, very capable supervision of Jacob Hansen. And uh, he, well, well, Teddy played the guitar. I didn't play it. The clean guitar on that song. He used, um, I, I guess he used an Ibanez for, for the first recording. But then... He added um, a Fender to that. It has a much more varied um, frequency. Uh, what, what we usually play with live, or what I've done um, for, for the last many years, is I use active EMG pickups, and they have a very loud and concentrated sound, good for metal, but it's not good for clean sound. Uh, for the clean sound, something like a, a passive a single coil... Uh, Fender will, will be better. And Jacob blended those two sounds, and then he even added some um, acoustic guitar. So Taylor played that part on three different guitars, and Jacob sort of mixed it together to, for, for the nicest sound that he could come up with. Precisely how he did that, I have no clue. Um, I couldn't even begin to speculate about that. He, he uh, does our, our guitar sound, and uh, we ask him for advice on, on how to make our live sound, and, and uh, it's, it's really 
of course, we, we have our inputs and, and our opinions about the, about the sound, but, but it's really uh, Jacob's creation of, on album, definitely. So um, that's how that sound was made. It's not something you can really do live, but it sounds very good on album. Um, I'm out of questions. Well, um, let's then um, have a drink, shall we? I have here some um, very dear drops to me, something called um, Lafroig, which is my, my favorite uh, scotch. It's um, <clears throat> quite some years ago since I got into the uh, smoked uh, whiskey business, and uh, I, I used to uh, drink something called Highland Park. It was the first... Uh, smoked whiskey that, that uh, I liked and uh, a few years after that when I could afford it I bought something a bit more expensive and uh, that was I think Col Ila and now for a few years I'm, I'm um, completely obsessed by this called uh, Lafroig. Cheers! Or as they say in Scotland, Slancha. Are you drinking anything? Tell me. Oban malt, yeah that's great. Um, all right, I see there's a lot of comments <clears throat> up here while I've been babbling. Let's see if my computer has 82% battery. Let me show you around a bit here. Take my questions with me, my iPad, and my drink. So this is, I'm a Prague, maybe I should say at the moment, and uh, this is where we live. When I say we, I mean me and, and um, listeners girl. Say hello to the nice people. Hello, all the nice people. <laughs> so, I've tasked her with um, lining up any interesting or deep, meaningful questions that you might have. Yes, I, uh, I will try to go to the beginning. Um, I see you're making tea. Yes, I may do a tea. I have Ferry's cup. It's my cup. Which you actually got from your daughter. Yes. It's very beautiful. It's gone. It's gone. Anyway, let's start with the first question here. Uh, was Kari at the show? Do you keep in touch with him? Yeah, I talk to him every now and then. He was at the Symphonic Show. I talked to him there the last time. Before that, I see him off and on. Um, not, not too much. I haven't lived in the Faroes for, for some time now. Mm. Okay. Next question. When do you think the USA Rishido... Huh. The USA rescheduled dates will take place. Um, I'm not sure if I should say anything about that, but um, I will say, unfortunately, it will probably not be this year. They are rescheduling it as fast as they can. There's a lot of, of uh, details. But there's, I think we're four bands on that tour, and everyone's schedule has to fit. The, the venue schedule has to fit. And um, it's a mess, and they're doing a great job, as, as always. And last I heard, it'll probably not be this year. As soon as we have dates, we will put them up for you. If, if you want to make very sure you do not miss the dates, you should track Tuir on Bands in Town. That's bandsintown.com slash T-Y-R. And uh, it'll notify you so that you don't miss a show near you. Was Next that one. Oh. <laughs> There's plenty of questions, don't worry. Um, yeah, this is a very long question, so I will start. Tears music draws heavily and very competently on tonal harmony. Your thorough knowledge of theory seems to distinguish Tear from most metal acts with your fine choirs and arrangements. Still, for an act taking most of its inspiration from pre Christian era, doesn't pure uh, tonal harmony seems like too much of a modern Western choice. What are your thoughts on this? That's one question of the. Yeah, I, that, that's uh, that's a good point. Um, what we play is very modern music. There's uh, well, we we do have folk melodies, and uh, but we treat them in a very modern way. If if you want the the pure thing, you can look up Faroese uh, chain dance, and you will see how the original sounds, and it's very very far from what we do. Um, I, I I do love modern music, and and 
every all the uh, classical European stuff, all the way from from Bach and and uh, to uh, Greek and and even more modern stuff like uh, Karl Orff, Gustav Holst, and um, I, I want to use that way to treat music. Um, but I'm I'm aware of the uh, anachronism and uh, hey, we use electric guitars, so <laughs> it's not just the way. We, we treat the music at all. It's also the way it sounds. So it's it's um, completely anachronistic, both in in uh, orchestration and and uh, composition. So it is no. Let, I won't say that. <clears throat> we should make separate uh, live. <laughs> <laughs> like what? Live streaming just about your compositions because we could uh, talk about it for <clears throat> you could talk about it for ages. I'm afraid I could. Uh, well, this question had continues, like, uh, do you ever consider developing the idea of Viking-inspired music or harmony in a more model or pre way, besides exploring perhaps different timbers associated with Viking Scandinavia? I, I don't think we know what timbers they were. Uh, if you look at bands like, um, I won't mention any names, but there are bands who uh, go around pretending to play completely original uh, Viking. Viking music, if there's even such a thing, I think it's rubbish. It's it's movie music, really. Um, I like heavy metal and I like uh, mythology and and uh, Nordic history. So that's what I put together. If you claim that you have the pre-Christian uh, Nordic sound in your band, uh, you still have all your work ahead of you. I don't believe it for a second. I don't think we can re recreate it. Um, with with any confidence, the, the most the most real uh, recreation of any such thing will be studies into actual uh, the, the, into the oldest recordings of Nordic music there there is there are, and um, I haven't done that much of it, of that, but I've done a bit of it, uh, and um, these I'll stop it there. Yes, Roger. you didn't have to. Um, are you sure? Yes. Okay. Next, next question, if, if there's one. Oh, there's plenty of questions. That's the reason oh, why I'm like, yeah. You talk about writing music very often. Uh, I wonder what your approach is to writing lyrics. The lay of our love is among my favorites. Wonder if you sing the last chorus as easily. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, uh, lyrics writing is... is um, Something I always, when I get to it, I always wish I, I'd done more about it. I used to um, read a lot of poetry when when um, trying to get inspiration for lyrics. I would read uh, Faroese poet uh, Janus Jurus and Norwegian poet Jakob Santa, especially, and a lot of um, uh, Edgar Allan Poe and some uh, Johannes V. Jensen, Danish uh, author and uh, Danish poet. and. Uh, I read uh, sagas, old uh, Faroese history, and uh, I read through through uh, Faroese ballads also. Um, the more aware you are of how poetry is put together, the easier it will be for you to uh, to write lyrics. And I struggle with it every time, and I find it very difficult. It's much more difficult for me than to write music, although it does take less time. It's much less um, circumstantial and uh, involving to, to write lyrics. All you have to do is put, put the words on the paper and, and, well, nowadays, into the computer, whereas the technical mess of, of recording is, is much, much bigger. Uh, the technical requirements of recording something properly are, are, are much more extensive. So the, the act of writing is much more simple, but to make sure it's good and, and lives up to the standard that you're aiming for is, is much more difficult, in, in my view. Um, but yeah, my my uh, approach has been just you know read poetry, read literature, and and uh, see how other people write. Of course, also read other bands' lyrics and uh, steal from them every now and then. Okay, and yep. uh, you forgot about the last chorus. Yeah, the lay of our love. It's very difficult to sing. Um, th there's a technical reason that it ended up so high, and I will not get into that right here. But it's extraordinarily difficult to sing live, and uh, I've yes. done it two or three times. Uh, you'll be the judge of how that went. Um, I practice a lot every time uh, we have that song on our set list. 
Yep. What happened after the Valkyra album? Why did you take a massive break up until the release of Hell? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. There's a story behind that. We um, first we ended the uh, cooperation with our former manager, and uh, with that went all the plans we had tours, um, festivals, some other things. And uh, I took over as, as booker and manager of, of the band for a long time, several years, as a matter of fact, I think until 16 or 17. And um, yeah, I, I, we wanted to um, make the next album differently as well. So we started buying equipment so that we could record professionally on our own and started looking into the technical requirements of uh, recording and that took, took more time than I had imagined. It was more expensive than I, than I had imagined also. So we were recording off and on, then going on, on uh, sh short tours and uh, trips for festivals. And all I really wanted to was just you know, stop touring and, and concentrate on the album fully. But those two, those two circumstances, the, the uh, ending of, of our relationship with our former manager and the insistence upon uh, doing it on our own made the, the five and a half years that it took. That's Next it? question. Okay, <clears throat> uh, there is another question. Um, like, when's the next show on the East Coast of the Europe planned? Um, yeah, so that's uh, part of the North America tour. And uh, as it looks at the moment, it'll be next year. Cool. Hopefully early next year. Nice. Um, has there ever been any thought of selling your guitar profiles or release of sheet music book? I have the Helia Rega, sorry for the pronunciation, uh, files you gave out on Facebook about f uh, nine years ago or so. If you go to tier.fo slash merch, you will find two tabs uh, up for sale, two songs on tabs up for sale. They are <clears throat> The Lay for Love and Blood of Heroes. The plan is to uh, make more tabs and uh, put them up for sale there. Then what I'm working on at the moment is Sinclair Wisa. Uh, I made uh, a poll on our official Facebook group. It's called The Great Heathen Army of Tuir. Excuse me. If you go there, you can vote for which song you want tabs for next. And um, the song with the most votes there was Sinclair Wisa. So I'm making those tabs at the moment and uh, they will be uploaded to our shop very soon. Cool. Um, yes. There is something I believe in Faroese. Should I <laughs> read it? Ner kem to til di munar at hava concert. Ola Jakub Ner kem to til di munar at hava concert. Uh, is, is a very small island. Is one of the the uh, it's the smallest inhabited island, I believe, in the Faroes. And uh, if they want to book a tour show, <laughs> it might be very difficult. Uh, no plans at the moment, but um, if you uh, book us for a show there, <laughs> we will come. Um, hello there. Just wanted to say that your last album with Tear is really a masterpiece. One of the best albums I've heard in the past years. Keep making great music. Greetings from Italy. Greetings back to Italy. Um, I heard the post office just opened the channels back into the country. We were just sending some merch and uh, we are now able to send uh, to Italy as well. So I hope the situation improves and we hope to play for you soon. Hey, Harry. Hi. <laughs> How come you used a lot of harsh or harsher than usual vocals for live in Tarshan with the symphonic orchestra? Yeah, um, we played three shows in two days. Um, the, the live symphonic sh show, that, as you hear it there, is the third. Well, mostly the, the audio is from the third of, of three shows and the second show in, in one day. The first show was at four o'clock and the show you see on the uh, YouTube video is at nine o'clock. So I was very tired and uh, there were immediate requests for, for uh, an extra show. Of course, the, the natural thing would have been to put it on the next day so I didn't have to play two shows in one day. But for uh, 
reasons, financial reasons, it was not possible. It's extremely expensive to keep the symphony orchestra around. So adding another day was, was um, not possible. The leader of the symphony orchestra asked me if I would play two shows in one day. And I thought about it for a few days and I said, yes. <clears throat> but very well aware that it might not be the best show, especially because of my vocals. So um, I try to sing, sing more clean where, where it is. I try to do it as an album, even though making it 100% is impossible. But um, the first thing that, that uh, goes away when, I, when I'm tired in, in my throat singing live is, is the clean vocal. It, most of it uh, turns into harsh vocals. So um, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's a result of those circumstances. What apps would you recommend for learning languages? Duolingo. Claudia. I'm uh, currently uh, trying to, to go through Duolingo every day in Czech. Nemluvim moc česky, ale trochu. I, I did also uh, have um, Pimsleur for Finnish and Czech, but it's much more um, old-fashioned and, and uh, kind of most, no, not most of it, I, I don't know how much, but at least a big part of it is useless in, in everyday language, I find, at least in Czech. I'm not sure how the, how the Finnish was. I never really got close to fluent in Finnish, and I, I have a dream of taking it up again. At the moment, Duolingo is by far the best. It doesn't... Um, it, it does. It has a strange way of, of making nonsensical um, uh, sentences, but it kind of forces you to think on your own. And I like the the uh, the method. Uh, you're going through Norwegian. Hmm, I stopped, but uh, yeah. I, yeah, you did that for quite quite a few months. How did yeah. that go? Oh, uh, it, it's fun. Can you say something in Norwegian? Yeah, you're glad. Yeah, you're glad. Yep. So yeah. Um, how do the fairies view foreigners participating in Green Dub Grab? Um, when I was uh, in, in a Green Dub, Green, the, the um, when I made that uh, nice picture of me that, that Paul Watson didn't like, um, there were a few foreigners. Uh, so after after the all, all the whales have been driven ashore and and, and uh, slaughtered, the uh, foreman reads up the names of everyone uh, pr uh, who, who uh, signed up for the list and uh, tells them where they can get their share. And there were some Germans, or, uh, at least two, maybe some English people on the list. So it doesn't matter where you're from, where you're registered. If you're present and you do the work and you register with, with the foreman after the killing, you'll get your share and nobody uh, but has you can't actually, about that. But you can't actually kill the... Well, it, on your own because you don't have to. If if you get the license, they're not going to ask where you're from. Yeah, I, I mean, but you have yeah. to get the license. It's yes, yes, like of course, of course. Yeah. The police won't let you into the area without a license. Um, have you ever tried a multi scale guitar? I have not. I would like uh, to have one, one with those bent frets or maybe the stepped frets. Um, or even fan frets. I've never tried any of those. Um, I, I'd like to. Uh, get in, into that. I, I haven't. Um, what is your opinion on the geopolitical geopolitical? Geo? Geo. Geo. Uh, nature of the Faroe Islands as a country? Do you support Faroe's independence? Are you sympathetic uh, to the current geopolitical arrangement of Scandinavia? Yes, I do support Faroe's independence, but uh, it's it's very complicated. And as long as things are going well, it seems um, rash to change anything. Um, if if the European Union kind of falls apart or crashes, um, the the obvious step for for the Nordic countries who are doing quite well would be a, a Nordic Union. But the the um, countries that are currently, the Nordic countries that are currently in the European Union, that's Denmark, Sweden and, and Finland, have to leave the European Union. And I think that the European Union has to really crash badly for that to happen. So I don't, I don't see that happening anytime soon. Um, but I'm, I'm very much in favor of Faroe's independence. And if we join the European Union or whatever other union the very next day, I'll be fine with it because at least we were asked. Uh, we were not... Asked. In fact, the current situation was put on us 
specifically against our, our wishes. And um, I'm not very fond of that, even though it happened quite a few years ago. Does your brother Yon still make music since, since he left here? I don't think he does, no. <clears throat> he plays uh, classical guitar very well even. And uh, we um, play together every now and then when we meet. <clears throat> and uh, But it's all, all classical and acoustic. Yeah, it's quite fun to visit your place because <laughs> your brothers are playing guitar all the time. Yep. <laughs> Maybe more than you do. No, that's not true. <laughs> No, they, they all play a little bit. Yeah. I'm the best. Yeah, I hope Yon will not hear that. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have any preferred plugins or VST for when you are recording at home, demos, etc.? Or does that not interest you so much? Yeah, it interests, interests me a lot. And the plugins I use at the moment are uh, bias effects. Um, we had an endorsement deal with them some years ago, it's uh, ended now, but I still use it. It's it's a very good product, and I I use it for demos, and um, it's it's very useful for that. It's it's easily good enough. We've used it live even quite a few times. Um, we, we've um, we've used Kemper uh, off and on also, but it's it's very uh, it's very bulky to travel with. Uh, the Kemper takes three racks. It's, it's a machine about this big. Whereas the the, um, uh, the bias effects fits on, on your iPad and you simply play live through your iPad and, and uh, another small machine. So uh, bias effects is the really good thing at the moment, in my opinion. Are they going to be more Wolf T-shirt in bigger sizes? Yes, we will restock everything on, on the web shop. Everything. Everything you see there will be restocked and we will add more products. Um, if you want to be sure not to miss uh, when that happens, then you should uh, go to tier.fo to the bottom of the page and sign up for the newsletter. We will let you know when uh, we have restocked uh, the items. Have you heard of a band called Quellertak? Quellertak in Norwegian, yeah. I, I, the name rings a bell. I can't say that I can connect it to any music that I've heard. Oh, so the question, if so, what are your thoughts? It's not really. No, no. Unfortunately, <laughs> I don't have that yeah. in my head. Uh, gotcha. mm, some my own home brief meat. Uh, I love that. Yeah, I ask people what they're drinking. So oh. if, if you see any of those comments, please let me know. Yeah, meat. Uh, Heike is writing open mouth is also great. Skull. Skull. I'm still working. I have to wait a little longer to drink. Yeah, don't work and drink. At work, figured I say hi, Harry. Stay safe. Looking forward to future <laughs> content. Uh, someone is asking me, how did you find it singing in Faroese for the Darshan show? <laughs> yeah, I had to really memorize the lyrics, which um, I, it wasn't perfect. Was for me. Perfect. Oh, you? Sorry, <laughs> sorry. I thought it was me. But can I answer first? Yes. When, when uh, the thing is, when we sing abroad and I make a, a mistake in Faroese, no one's ever gonna know this, so I can. Just mumble a bit. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. How about how about you singing Paris? <laughs> it was fun. I have no idea what uh, I was actually singing about. If uh, I would say that to one of my uh, past singing teachers, they would just kill me. No, I actually ask what it's about. But um, of course, it's difficult to keep it in, in my mind all the time. And uh, yeah, I had to write all the pronunciation um, about the uh, words. Mm -hmm. So... Um, it was challenging. I think I still sound very badly, but I like it. In in a choir, it's, it's very hard to hear. Yeah, um, fortunately. You can, for example, you can try to listen to uh, the album version of uh, Ragnar's Kvaya. Tadeus is singing singing the chorus, and uh, if you if you single out if you could single out his voice, you would hear he has he doesn't have a perfect Ferris accent, but as soon as you put a few more voices on it, it's impossible to hear. So it's, um, you can uh, screw up your accent in a choir and no one's gonna notice. Yep. How do you deal with blank page syndrome or writer's block? I, I never really have that. Um, if if I, I find if I work long enough, put, put enough hours into it, it always turns into something. And uh, from experience, I know it will, and I never feel stuck. Um, I just keep 
you know, looking for, for inspiration and directions and, and, uh, and words and rhymes and whatever uh, for, for what I need. And um, the, uh, the, the most important thing is to have a specific idea of what it is you're trying to say. And then just finding ways to say that is, is just, just a matter of, of looking. And, and uh, if you don't find it immediately, just keep looking. You know what you're going to say? How are you going to say it? And how does it fit into the melody or the song or whatever? And uh, writer's block is, is something I, I really never had. I heard chocolate helps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sweets in general. I, I, I've, I've eaten so much sugar oh and God. so many sweets. When we were working on Surma moments. album, we were, uh, we were living in, uh, in the Netherlands and we were visiting um, the chocolate factory Yes. All the time. It was. <laughs> yeah, we just bring so our laptops bad. and go to the chocolate factory and, and order uh, hot chocolate and. and uh, chocolate with brownie. And chocolate cake. <laughs> and then work on lyrics for an hour or two. But, but it works. Um, I, I remember when I was. I, we were in studio also with Toy for, for the uh, Vacher album. I, I was um, recording vocals and guitar during the day and. and uh, and writing lyrics at night and to stay awake i, I <laughs> had sweets and, and uh, soft drinks and yeah it's not it's not a healthy method and, and that's one of the reasons i wanted to do it more slowly for, for the next album and um, that's how i do it cool. fill your brain with sweets and uh, you'll get there <laughs> greetings from mexico hello uh, yeah I, oh i forgot i had a specific plan that at the very start of this video i would say don't even ask we are coming to brazil and mexico Go ahead. <laughs> but no one actually asks so oh. uh, okay. you're skip. not wanted anymore yeah, you can skip those <laughs> how did you become interested in norse mythology and how did uh what influence your inspiration for tear how did it influence sorry how did it influence mm -hmm. your inspiration mm -hmm. for tear cheers from norway i drink aquavit uh, what is Aquavit? It's uh, it's the Faroese drink, that, well, oh. Danish drink that you really, that, really that have. Yeah, yeah. It's okay if you didn't drink too much of it once. Slash it. But enjoy. <laughs> um, when I was about 10 years old, we, we learned about uh, Nordic mythology and, and Nordic history and Faroese history in, in school, in, in, uh, in you know, uh, basic school history and and i've been fascinated with it ever since that's how it happened we have a very old teacher who was extraordinarily good at telling stories and i was completely captivated by it and i still am cool uh someone is very um shocked that you have a daughter oh i have a son and a daughter mm -hmm. yep do you know the orchestra di director of Fura? Uh, he was for one day our tour guide and showed me where you grew up. Yeah, he told me about that story. <laughs> <laughs> it's so connected. Yeah, um, he, he's, he told me uh, that uh, he had a, a, a tourist party and, and uh, they went to Skarvanes, uh, which is where my father was from. And uh, close to that is, is a place called Jubadala, which, which is where uh, I grew up the first seven years of my life. And, uh, and he, he told me, he, he stopped there and, and showed this, this tour super fan where, where I grew up. And <laughs> it's nice to hear when, when uh, people are so much into it that they even come to the pharaohs. So thank you for that. And uh, yes, I've heard that story from, from the man himself. Paul Jakob Thompson is, is the guy you're talking about. By the way, it, the whole symphonic show was his idea. He asked me years and years ago, it must be three or four years ago, since he started planning the uh, symphonic show with Tuir. And uh, he's a great guy. He's a sweetheart. Yep. Um, hi, Harry. Greetings from Mexico. Hello, Mexico. <laughs> In the song The Lay of Thrym, what are the lyrics to the last part right after the second chorus near the ending? Yeah, there's, it's not written in, in the official lyrics for, for the track. And um, if you know the story behind the Lay of Thrym, um, it's, it's about Thor and Loki. Uh, well, Thor's, Thor's hammer is stolen first by the giant Thrym. And they have to fool 
Thrym, uh, Thrym wants Freya, which is the goddess, uh, Norse goddess of, of uh, sexuality and fertility. And he wants her in return for the hammers. So Thor dresses up as Freya and uh, Loki as one of her handmaidens. And they go uh, on this quest to get the hammer back. They succeed, come back with the hammer. So uh, it's, it's just a joke in the end of the song. We say... Odin's oldest son is quite a guy. That refers to, to Thor, of course. He's old, Odin's oldest son. Make him dress a drag and you die. So that's uh, a re reference to him killing Thrym. Thrym uh, made, indirectly made Thor dress in a drag and uh, Thor killed him for it. That's what it says. Odin's oldest son is quite a guy. Make him dress a drag and you die. Glad you're a shittling. Um... If you do it like this, you will still answer questions tomorrow. That's true. So be quick. Yeah. <laughs> How long have we been online? Forty-five minutes. Yeah. Let's let's um, let's answer a few more questions. I like this. Why did Paul Arneholm left here? Um, he he was uh, studying. Um, what was he studying at at that time? He was studying uh, uh, archaeology. He became an archaeologist, and uh, he at that time he he no plans to become a professional musician so uh, that kind of uh, made, made the cooperation stop um, he has later revised his plans and is, is now uh, also a musician again he has a band called Hamradun and it's, it's a very good band you should check it out um, getting getting well paid and reg and stable work in archaeology is extraordinarily different and in the pharaohs there's no so far as I know, there are no full-time uh, paid archaeologists, and um, that's a shame, really, because there's a lot of stuff I I'm sure one could look into in the ground. Um, so, yeah, that, that was the situation at the time. He was studying archaeology. Do you ever have or go to after parties after your shows on tour? Every now and then, uh, not nearly as much as we used to. Um, and even back when we used to, I'm, I'm really an um, amateur party animal. I, I, I'm not very uh, social. I, I'm, I'm very introverted. And uh, I don't like hanging around large crowds of other people. If, if I meet uh, someone, some of my friends, uh, someone who has become my friend through, through many years of touring in the US, for example, and we have a day off the next day, I might go somewhere and have a few drinks with them. Uh, it does happen, but um, most of the time, no. I would say maybe one once every two or three weeks when we're on tour. Mostly not, no. Uh, it's it's hard. It doesn't get any easier as you get older to to sing at this level. So um, behaving like you're on tour is also important when you're on tour, and, and not uh, obviously it in includes not drinking too much when you're on tour. I'm not on tour at the moment. <laughs> um, do you like the band Hamradun? Hamradun, I, I like it very much. They made some, uh, especially their second album. Uh, it has it has a very good uh, production, a very good performance, and uh, I, I like the songs a lot. Mm, could you explain how you work with Google Drive when composing an album? Yeah. Um, for example, we put all the lyrics into Google Drives so that, like we did with the, with the Surma album, so we can work on it even long distance uh, in, in real time. And um, we also, uh, I also make make a um, working uh, schedule on uh, Google Drive uh, sh uh, sheets where I put all the tasks in, like, you know, record uh, rhythm guitar, solo, vocals, uh, arrange drums, everything. And then, then it counts up. I estimate how much time each task takes and it the, the sheet counts up how much time we need to finish this album so it uh, is a very good way to keep an overview of, of your project it, that could be used for anything it doesn't have to be be an album you could use it for any task i'm sure there are uh, apps or, or, or websites that let you do this but this is kind of um, an improvised and, and free uh, method that, that i've made up myself congratulations but thank you. <laughs> Our room are going to be on Spotify. Oh, yes. It's going to be released on, on the Metal Blade Records as any of their other releases. They put all their releases on, on Spotify as well. And all uh, they're, they're one of the 
big uh, old uh, prestigious um, uh, record labels they have access to all the streaming services and you'll find it wherever you uh, pay for streaming i'm sure yes and it can be like beginning of autumn or middle of autumn somehow i don't know yes mm. it can be <laughs> Are you planning on having more songs in Fairies in the next album? As it looks at the moment, yeah, there'll be a few more Fairies. How many were on the last album? There were, there were two ballads. Um, it, there could be three or four on the next album. <laughs> Audience, all this, yeah, it's, it's um, uh, something else. Um, is there a key to being original after having released 10 albums? Yeah, original, I, I think that might be a bit overrated. If you look at the really successful bands, um, like Iron Maiden. Iron Maiden is a typical example, <coughs> Judah, Judas Priest. Well, I'm um, maybe even especially older bands, oh, ACDC, yeah. um, <coughs> they more or less uh, well, I hope I'm not offending anyone, but to a very large degree, those bands did the same thing over and over. They found one formula and <clears throat> developed it, and maybe even trace it back on some some albums. Something that I usually don't like, but um, you have one, you find one method, and my preferred method is is just to to use the same uh, formula, more or less, f for the same band. Um, well, as long as, as the band lasts or in, until something possesses me to do something different. So I'm not really worried about being original. I'm, I'm more worried about just fi finding good melodies and good stories to put put into them. Um, if you can do that, um, you, you can use the same um, uh, composition method over and over without anyone complaining about it. And, and um, if you look at yeah, other bands, like more modern bands like Sabaton, have done a great job of it. Uh, Power Wolf springs to mind. Um, you know, bands who find one, you would call it gimmick probably, but it's it's kind of a, a derogatory term these days. They find one good and effective method that people like and want to hear, and you just stick with that. If you want to really mix it up and make something completely different, you're, you're just going to, in my opinion, you might as well make a new band. And... and uh, and the, yeah, that's what I have to say about that. I'm going to hit you all the time when when it's stop talking. Stop talking. <laughs> um, I'm glad to know. Yeah, you're glad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the only who um, struggles with lyrics, lyric writing. Alas, there is hope. Um, how much advance notice were you given for going on 70,000 tons of metal? I want to go in 2021 or 2022, but only if you guys are going. Oh, It's, it's uh, very um, up and down. Uh, I'm not sure how their booking happens, but uh, sometimes we've had months, more than a half a year notice, but that doesn't mean they will announce us. They, they announce bands... Uh, on a schedule as well and to keep up the interest and, and keep the sales going. So e even though we may be booked uh, way in advance, you may not know about it until uh, the last moment. So that's a question I really can't answer. Sometimes they will book us long in advance, announce immediately. Sometimes they'll book us way in advance and announce very late. Other times they will book bands very late as well and, and naturally also announce late. So, so that was just up in the air. Yes. Yes. Is it harder for you to write lyrics in English? No, it's much easier in English. It's very hard in Faroese, actually, much harder. And that's obviously because I've only heard throughout my entire youth and, and uh, life, I've heard mostly metal in English. And it's kind of the, the uh, metal language. Metal was invented in England and written in English, and, and then mostly uh, also in English in, in America, of course. So it feels very natural and also a bit more distant maybe in English. And you can, you can be, uh, what shall I call it, pretentious without feeling guilty in, in, um, in your secondary language or, or even third language. 
so when it comes to Faroese, you feel much more exposed. Uh, I'm not sure if you know the same thing with, with Czech. Do you find it more difficult to write a lyric in Czech or feel more uh, feel more exposed if you were to sing or write Czech? Mm, sorry, I didn't listen to you at all. <laughs> oh, <laughs> she's just spacing out while I'm mumbling. That's very common in this house. <laughs> so, um, so let's so just get through it. Go to the next question. <laughs> if something is beeping here, it sounds like bump or it's, something. It's the washing machine. Oh, it's, it's finished. We have a washing machine that's no. It was not singing. A fanfare. It's, it's usually singing. It's beep beep. Yeah, no, it's definitely the washing machine. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, greetings from Hungary. I hope you'll come back soon. Memorize is nice. I'm using it for Icelandic. Hi, Harry. Do you have a favorite food? Are there, there any foods you specifically like to have when you visit other countries? Um, I, I, can, I usually say my favorite, mood, favorite food is meat. I love uh, all kinds of meat. Uh, I don't think really I've tasted any meat specifically i don't like unless it's um you know historically uneatable meat like tongue or liver or heart i don't like the context of those but if i could i would eat only meat uh it's not so easy um i like to try local dishes here and there um usually i just i just order as much meat as possible <laughs> honestly um I hope next time I see Tyr, you bring some merch at Portugal. Last time I saw you at Vagos, and I hadn't, I hadn't how to buy some of your merch. I didn't know how to. I guess. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, I'm not sure we have any concerts in. in uh, yeah. Yeah. Wait a moment. Before all this uh, Corona stuff happened, um, our booker was looking into uh, booking a trip through through Spain and Portugal. And of course, we'll bring merch. We'll bring all the merch we can when we come back, definitely. So that, that tour, of course, has been postponed now, and I'm sure they're looking into making it sometime next year. So we'll be back in Portugal soon. How and when did you meet Paul Arneholm? What's your Duolingo username? What's my Duolingo username? My Duolingo name is Heri Johan, I think. I think there is. Yeah. Uh, isn't it chess? No, same on Duolingo, maybe. I don't remember. Harry Yuan or Harry Yuan Um Anyway, how did, how, you, how did I meet Paul Arne? He was, uh, well, my big brother was playing in a band in the Faroes um, called, uh, it was a, like a cover entertainment band. They were called Revival. And uh, they, were, they were from a different island, from the South Island, and uh, most all of them except my big brother. And uh, I met Paul Arne through them. He was hanging out with them when they were playing uh, around our place. And um, I, I remember thinking very early why, why he just wouldn't be the singer because he was an excellent uh, entertainer and, and uh, fine singer. Uh, so uh, w once we made Tuir, uh, I had the idea to ask him to sing uh, in our band. Okay. Um, my guitar has fan frets. You can try it whenever you want. Thank you. And who's that? Antoine, I'm not sure if Antoine... Antoine Mik Miktarian, no, Mik yeah. Miktarian. <laughs> Hello, Antoine. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I saw your latest video, uh, your premiere, just uh, a few hours ago. It was very good. And uh, yeah, if ever I meet you, <laughs> bring the fan get a green guitar. Mm -hmm. Hi there. Will you come to Mexico or Latin America at some point, either with your own show or on a festival? Uh, the Aztec? Goods yearn to clash with the Norse gods. Gods, sorry. Aztec gods yearn to clash with the Norse gods. Loved hell, by the way. Thank you. We are always on our way to South America. Um, <laughs> Takes some time. It, it does. <laughs> um, I'm very sorry it's so long since we've been there, especially in Mexico, uh, which is North America, I know, not South America. But um, every time we go to the Americas, uh, we ask them to... to uh, look into the possibilities of playing in in, uh, in Mexico, Central America, and South America. And it's very difficult to coordinate. Unfortunately, the last few times it has not been possible. We, we will keep pushing for it, and eventually it will happen, I guarantee. Greetings from Canada. 
What's the funniest conspiracy th conspiracy theory you heard of, and what's your favorite one? <laughs> conspiracy theories. Um, I, I generally don't find them funny. Um, some of them are jokes, of course, and uh, um, and meant to be funny. But usually, when I hear a conspiracy theory, uh, I'm not laughing. I'm just palming my face. <clears throat> um. um so yeah, no, I, <laughs> I have a very negative reaction to conspiracy theories, and uh, I don't find them <laughs> funny. What is your opinion on the music of Sun Life Rasm Rasmussen? Sun Life Rasmussen, yeah. Sun Life. Uh, or if you prefer to answer it less personally on contemporary classical music in general. Um, there's a lot of contemporary music that I absolutely detest because it, it's uh, it's um, you know, impressionistic and, and uh, abstract, and I do not appreciate that at all. I like music to have melodies and uh, harmonies, chord progressions. If it doesn't have that, I I, I refuse to accept it as music. Um, now. Rasmussen. But still, there's there's some ab abstract. Uh, Paintings that that uh, and and uh, painters that I like very much. So every now and then I hear a piece of abstract music that I, I think is quite okay, and uh, that goes for Sonlev Rasmussen as well. But he, he did make the the uh, Nordica, the new uh, Nordic uh, national anthem, and uh, that was a great great piece of composition, uh, which is only slightly abstract, and uh, I like it very much. Will you ever come to Italy? I'm from Catania, Sicily. Yes, yes, definitely. Um, I think last time I talked to our booker, they were looking at uh, around the same time as we're going to uh, Spain and Portugal to make a South European tour and include Italy in that. And I see now we have just gone over one hour live. And um, should, I, should become... I think it is about time to, to uh, end this chat, unless you have a very good question there. I will choose some. Okay, let's do this fast. Uh, how do you make the vocals on your song sound so quiry? Vocal technique like Hansi or an effect on your mic, if the later which kind? Uh, well, the choir you just get by by adding more voices to to the uh, to the arrangement. Uh, we use anywhere from, from uh, in in the choruses anywhere from two to four voices. Every now and then there's just one voice, but that's not something we use very much. Then we I will sing the first voice and we'll get everyone all the four of us together to, to sing uh, the same voice um, about four times. So, so you um, quadruple it and that makes it sound like a huge choir. Um, when we have four voices, we do the same thing with, with all four voices. That, that means I sing, sing the first voice and uh, maybe Gunnar sings the second voice uh, alone. And then Tadeus, as in uh, on Ragnarskaya, sings the third voice and uh, Tadeus sings the fourth. Then we all get together and sing all together on each voice uh, about three or four times and that gives makes this huge um choir impression so that's the cheap way to do it if you can't afford a real choir which we couldn't until uh, the 8th of february cool um as far as do you feel more linked to icelandic culture or to denmark uh, yeah well i mean i, I lived in denmark for uh, seven years and i lived in iceland for one year but growing up in the pharaohs it naturally links you more to to uh, danish because you learn danish simply by exposure to it in the pharaohs and uh, th there's a um, political link very strong link to, to denmark at the moment so honestly when i when i went to iceland in 1999 it felt things felt a bit strange to me but uh, as soon as you get to know the people you see that the, they apart from, from the language and some cultural quirks, they might as well be Faroese. And the same goes for Norway. So so with some experience, you, you see that uh, Norwegian and Icelandic people are very, very close to Faroese people. And Danes are a tiny bit more distant, a tiny bit more, I don't know, Germanified, but uh, fine people still, uh, um, only not as like Faroese as, as the Icelandic. What's the background story behind Mare of My Night? Um, I think it's about time to uh, wrap this up. <clears throat> um, I want to uh, ask you to follow me on Facebook, where I'm Johansen.Heder, and to follow me on Instagram, where I'm Heri Johansen. Follow me on Twitter, where I'm at Heri Johansen. And please 
visit the Twitter web store at tier.fo slash merch. <clears throat> and before we end this, I should thank those who support me on Patreon. They are Benny Olson, Michael Lewandowski, Graham Peebles, Scott, Tiffany Lee, Juan Gonzalez, Megan Badger, Tomo, Kevin Krentkowski, and Dean Belmont. If you want to know how those people got into this uh, direct transmission on YouTube, you can go to patreon.com slash Hirjonsen. And thank you for hanging out with us. And see you next time. Slideshow. No? Bye.